This is a Bolex B8 camera that was recently serviced. I got it back two days ago, three days ago. It comes with a warranty, which I have not opened. Set that aside. Uh, the camera was cleaned, lubricated, and adjusted. Different things were done to it. And uh, I'm going to put it together and start using it. I haven't done hardly any regular 8mm for a couple years. But I have so much film left over. These are three boxes. But I have many 100 foot cans and other cans of different kinds of this film. Cinex and DP3 and all sorts of stuff. My goal has been to try to make sound movies on film indoors under existing light. So you can't put sound on regular 8, but regular 8 could be blown up to 16 or like I have done the sound could be added in a com in the computer and that has worked very well that's as far as I got so here's the container uh, that the camera was in and there are lenses in here that I have to figure out which ones to use. There's three lenses in, in the pouch. They're all silver, they, they look all long and uh, I'm not sure what they are. The strap is broken but it could be sewn back together. I usually just cut them off and throw them away. This camera came with this really cool handle. A take up reel. A wide angle adjuster for the viewfinder. And two Switar lenses. The 5.5 millimeter and a 12.5. I think it's 12.5. This is the 5.5. This one. And this one, which is smaller, it's a 1.8. They're both 1.8. What is this? Swaitar 1.5 something. I can't see it. 12.5 millimeter. Alright. So they, these two, the wide angle ones and the normal, will go on the camera. Do, do, do. I have the book for it. And I scanned this at 600 dpi and put it on Facebook. This book has some supplementary information that's been copied from this book, which I have a camera for. But this book has the information for the shutter. The B8 was not originally made with a variable shutter, but this one has it. It's a later model. and. It's called a B8VS. V is in Victor. V is variable shutter. VS. So this one has it. So you need the information from the P2, which has a variable shutter. That said, and put into the container. I think you could load it with all this on it. Anyway, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to put it together and then load it 
and then try shooting indoors under available light with Fomapan R100 film and I will try flashing it. That's my latest experiment. So the wide angle lens will go on the bottom because I don't want to use it all the time. And the 12.5 will go above it. And there it is. Very, very nice. I like this. Hmm. It's very quiet. This should be very good for sound sync work. I have it set on 16 frames per second. There's a little black dot at the top and has red Red is for 16. I think it's 16. Yeah, it's 16. 8, 12, 16, 24, 32, 48, do, 64. Do not use the motor when the camera is empty. The door now works. Didn't used to work very well. Push, turn, a quarter turn, stop, tight, good. Push, quarter turn, open. That's it. Open the gate, close the gate, read the book. This little rubber roller still doesn't seem to turn. Maybe it never is supposed to. I don't know. I thought it was a lower clutch. But what do I know? It kind of turns a little bit. I can feel it. I can't see it, but I can feel it turn a little bit. Anyway, I hope it works. The camera smells like it's been lubricated. It has a slight odor. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'll use the Fomapan R100. This film is longer than the Lomo Developing Spiral, the 25 foot one. That's the smallest Lomo Developing Spiral tank, and which I would use. However, the film, when it comes in the box, doesn't fit. You have to, if you use all of it, Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. If you load the camera in the daylight, you cut off both ends and then develop it. Because the film on both ends would have been flashed by the loading and unloading and flipping over process. What I do is I load the film in total darkness, flip it over, and then I get to use all of the film. So I use the medium size Lomo developing tank for 50 feet. So I get a longer film, maybe six feet longer. You know, whenever you take six feet of regular eight film and you split it in half and join the ends, that's 12 feet of film. If you take three feet off of each end, it's probably too much, but Let's say you just do three feet and you split it. That's six feet of film at 80 frames per foot, whatever that is, at 16 frames a second. That's a lot of showtime. So either develop it twice, as I have done using the small Lomo spiral tank, or develop it once, all of it, on the medium size. I like these lenses because they're pretty fast. 1.8. 1.8 is pretty fast.
this looks like it's a 1.5. I need a microscope to see it, but I think it's a 1.5. 1 1.5. 1 it is. It is. It's F2, F1.5. They focus. A little snug. This one's real loose. The wide angle's very loose. The 12.5 is a little tighter. It'll be really interesting to watch these movies. Oh, I want to put the viewfinder back on. This thing is for 6.5 millimeter. So it's not exactly the right one. Close enough. Hmm. How do you put it on? There you go. Just slide it over. So you would set this on 12.5. This is the, the viewfinder. Set the viewfinder on 12.5. Then slide this over and you get 6.5 millimeter. You could read it there. So that's what's on the camera. The camera is all equipped, ready to go. I'll read the manual about how to load it because you use two reels with the film connected to both then you drop it in and put it behind the gate and shut the gate so you don't put it in and then put it on the reel you do it first never run it at higher speed than 16 when it's empty this is so quiet that it'll make very nice sound sync movies. So if I use the telephoto lens, which I have several of, from a distance and use a tripod, you won't even hear the camera. The posts only have a little flange at the bottom. These reels have three, well the Bolex reels have four holes, one and two. So you put this so the one is up and like I say you get the film, you put the film in one hand and the reel in the other and you connect them and then you drop them you open the gate and you drop them into the camera like that close the gate and then the door and you're ready to film and when you're all done with your masterpiece you could send it to a lab or do it yourself and blow it up optically on a JK optical printer to 35 millimeter film. The gate only costs $1,200. <laughs> the optical printer costs about $15,000. But you know, that's Hollywood. But you could start with $15 for a roll of film.